Breast cancer is now the, I think it's the, one of the most um, rampant cancer in, um, what's it called? In, um, especially in the world, not just unique to Nigeria, because they say that 2.26 um, million cases are diag was diagnosed rather in 2020. It is also the most common cancer amongst women in both developed and developing countries making it a major public health concern. Now, breast cancer was rare in Nigeria in the past, but it is now increasing due to urbanization and lifestyle change and um, is now the leading cause of cancer, especially cancer-related deaths in Nigeria, accounting for about 23% of all cancer cases and 18% of cancer death. Now, in most cases, breast cancer is often diagnosed at the late stage in Nigerian women, which reduces their chances for survival. Nigerian women are also more likely to be diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer that can, mm, than women of European um, ancestry, and they tend to be diagnosed at much younger age. Because of the late diagnosis, the only treatment option available are expensive procedures which many Nigerian women cannot afford. So today we're asking how can or how do we do better with breast cancer awareness in Nigeria? And what is the importance of early detection? Now, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to the right one, All right, so quickly, when last did you check for, like, screen your breast? And the husband? Uh, when last? I, myself. I think the last time I checked myself for any signs or any giveaways, that was, uh, that was last week. Yeah, it was you breast. current girl. It was <laughs> it was breast cancer awareness, and I'd seen one video, and I was really scared. Are you serious? So, <laughs> so, let me tell so you. Let me so let me confess. <laughs> let me confess, because the blessing yeah. don't reach like last year or two years ago. But somehow, right in the bathroom, I tried to do those quick, you know, check with your four fingers, kind of round the breast, round the nipple, press the nipple. Well, that was what I did last week. Auntie. It wasn't the hospital. I'm talking about hospital screening. See me, see me giving you free accolades. Let me bring in our guest. Dr. Antunola is a medical doctor and social entrepreneur with cogent experiences in advocacy, teamwork, and strategic planning. She is a TEDx speaker with years of experience in advocacy and health, uh, media, and communication. She is a team lead of the Health City, a social enterprise that provides young people with preventive health information and services via their website, thehealthcityonline.com, and um, several other projects, both online and physical. She also founded Panacea First Aid um, Services, a social enterprise that provides first aid medical services and training. And she is with us in studio, looking okay. all fly with her lovely smile. Hi, Doc. Hi. <laughs> we love it when we have doctors here because, <laughs> trust me, it's not easy to find you people. People are always busy, busy, busy. Well, thank you so much for making our time to discuss uh, breast cancer with us. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So, first of all, the question I asked Jennifer, how, um, what's, the, what's the frequency that um, women should, like, when, when it comes to checking of, or of just try to check your breast and all that. How often should you check, you know, for breast cancer? So, um, I, will, I will first start with, uh, in the past, we used to talk about um, self-breast exam, right? Um, the one that you guys were talking about earlier, <laughs> Tracy. But now, uh, we've moved past that to self-breast aware awareness, right? So, it's not just um, routine checking, like, maybe every other week or every other two weeks, but now it's it has moved on to awareness, mm. right? Um, so um, most women would not even know that, in most women, that uh, one breast is bigger than the other. Mm. So it's maybe when they're pregnant and their breasts are really heavy and there's a change and they're like, ah, what's happening here? So um, some women, you, they don't, if you take take a picture of their breast and really they don't know, and then you send it and you're like, no, this is not my breast. <laughs> yeah. Right? So we move from that um, exam to self awareness. You know what your breast look like. Um, not just so that when there's any change, you are able to hmm. know. Not just you. I know the breast size and consistency changes throughout the sac um, 
the menstrual cycle, mm. right? Uh, some women have fuller breasts when they're on their period, yeah. and with a PMS, so, like yeah. painful breast swelling. So if you are aware of what your breast looks like, feels like normally, if there's any little change, you are able to, you know, pick it up. Like uh, there's a change in the skin color, skin, um, your nipple has been inverted. Some of some signs of um, mm. breast cancer, you're able to pick it up early. Not all changes are cancerous. Of mm. course, right. Um, some women have lumps in their twenties, in their uh, and it's not malignant it's because not my, malignant. my my sister actually had a lump, but by the time we were panicked and everything, they took it out and they did the test. It was it was not um, cancerous. Well, so so let's talk this issue about heaviness of the breast, right? As a woman gets older, so there are so many things I never used to feel when I was like when my monthly cycle comes. But this, for the past I think three four years now. Whenever my period is coming, it's from my breast. Like it is extremely painful and heavy. You know, it's very hurting. Like very, if you, it's so sensitive that you can't touch it. So are these like normal, or is something that I need to be concerned about that I need to be checking? Because it's something that never happened to me. When people are talking about menstrual, this thing, it just comes and it goes. I don't feel nothing, no waist pain, no nothing. But um, for the past, I think three years now, you know. Whenever, like literally, I feel my you can you can boil egg with this with the heat <laughs> that comes out of my breast. Like it's hot. I don't know how, whether you're feeling the same thing, but it's very hot. It's you feel the temperature that it's different from my body temperature. Extremely hot, extremely heavy. You know. So is this something that I should be concerned about to check it, or it's just okay that my my hormones have changed? Well, I, w I would say this, that PMS comes in waves. Mm. <laughs> right? It comes in, it comes in several waves. So, um, I, there was a trend that I saw on Twitter, just related to common people experiences that uh, some women were talking about how when they were in their 20s, they never had menstrual pain. You know, the abdominal yes, no. pain and, stuff, and then, by the time they eat 25 or 26, they started having it all of a sudden. And some women would talk about having um, anal pain, rectal mm. pain, yes. PMS also can cause rectal pain. Some people start talking about bloating. So PMS comes in waves. As long as you're a woman, you're menstruating. The symptoms you never had before. Yeah. You might grow older and then have them. Some women um, that have um, dysmenorrhea, that's really painful um, abdominal pain during periods. Sometimes when they have children, they realize that it, it disappears. Stops, yeah. Right. So it comes in waves. Your body is not static. It's dynamic. So, and for the heaviness of breast, yes, a lot of women feel really heavy where it's painful um, and it has to do with the hormonal changes that are going through the body like that the body is going through uh but even and it has been happening for three years like you said i think the 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 part where it becomes a concern is if it's impairing your um how do i put it your quality of life mm. in that period because we expect that by the time your period is over and uh, maybe it happens in a couple of days, your period, your period is over. It's like two weeks before the period. So even before the period comes, it, the pain stops, you know. And, and everything goes it back. It relieves, yeah. Everything goes back. So... So... <laughs> hey, well, Jenny, baby. But even if that, <laughs> Are you with me or we are, you are not with me on that? I mean, c concerning heaviness, it was when I was younger. Um, I think breast heaviness for me became minimal. That was um, two, three years ago. But then... Of, Recently, I, I don't experience. I don't experience that. I know it gets heavy, but then it's not as heavy as it used to be, and it's not as painful as it used to be. And even my cramps, the pain has also, Subsided. yeah, has, has has also reduced. That sometimes I don't even know. I mean, I can check my calendar and know that oh, I'm supposed to experience. Um, I'm supposed to have my period in the next few days, or it's supposed to start today. So I don't even know until it has started then the pain starts but then sometimes the pain is not is no, is non existent yeah it's not as yeah before. but what i want to ask is um so bringing it back to breast cancer i know there's so many signs that doctors have put out there it's all over the internet but if you can shed more light into some of these things that we need to take note of so in case you notice something i mean sometimes people might not necessarily um be so aware to do the checks so let's say i didn't do the check and i just woke up one day probably i'm about to shower i look in the mirror what are those easy telltale signs right that should get me a bit worried or i need to go to the hospital and get like proper screening done okay so i'll first like to start with that most breast cancers are asymptomatic 
like you you don't have to feel a lump for there to be breast cancer some women like the lump isn't there but maybe they go for mammography you know mammography is we'll get yeah, mammogram, yeah. Like mammography, mammograms are recommended for women over 40 mm. maybe they go for mammogram there's no lump like you can't feel anything but the mammogram picks it up that there's a cancer there so you don't have to feel a lump for there to be cancer just to start with and then most women feel like if the lump is hard and painful that's when it is cancerous you know? pain and uh, only like five percent of people with breast cancer will present with a painful lump mm. like very minute numbers so it's not so you have like a hard painful lump do you have breast cancer so um well if there is a lump obviously go get it checked out right and not just lump in the breast lump in the axilla the armpit and a lump in the area above the chest mm. so if you feel lumps in those places please go um see your doctor and also um for the skin on the breast itself it could be you can if you notice any reddening um and that's not normal skin changes sometimes if the skin the skin around the breast is like your normal skin can be red and it's way away if you have like a skin reaction or something but if that redness is persisting or the skin is becoming thicker it's becoming harder mm. those are some of the signs that you can look out for also the nipple if the nipple goes inside like um the nipple is supposed to be outside and that's not the way your breast is. The nipple is reverting. They say inverting. It's going back. Or you have bloody uh, discharge from the nipple. Please. Um, those are some of the signs that you can see. And there's something they call peel the orange. Like orange peel appearance of the skin. So it's like um, the skin of an orange. There's dimpling yeah, all over yeah. the skin mm. of um, the breast. So those are some of the signs that... I feel like yeah, opening my chest to look at my breasts. <laughs> 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 hmm. that, uh, that women can, can look out for. Hmm. So, I mean, it's quite interesting. You know what? Let's take a very short break. When we come back from the break, we'll continue this conversation. Stay with us. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, this is truly for the ladies and men too, because men is important that you pay attention to your partner's um, breast. Breast cancer awareness and importance of early detection is what we're discussing, and we have with us Dr. Odunola. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 Now, the reason I said men is because men, some men cannot see breast and close their eyes. <laughs> so whilst you are in that your comfort zone doing the do in the other room, you know, it would be nice that you also pay attention to your, your partner's um, breast and all of that. Also, it's important to mention at this point that mm. men can also have breast cancer. Yeah, yeah well, I was going to ask that. Yeah. We're yeah. coming to them. Because <laughs> I've, I've actually heard that. Yeah, I've heard you know, that. But how, how, um, like how common is breast cancer for men it's, it's it's should i say rare it's not it's becoming commoner but mm. it's still rare compared to women so if uh if 100 percent of people with breast cancer breast cancer yeah 95 percent of them would obviously be women yeah, well, yeah. but five percent of them would Could be, be men. men right mm. so there is a chance does this have anything to do with the men that are like big like they have the big because you know those are people that have tissues yeah. in the well, breast. They, 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 um, men that have a big breast, in the, it's called gynecomastia. Yeah. Mm. But uh, it's not necessarily a precursor to, um, to breast cancer. Obesity is a risk factor for breast cancer in, in women, but not necessarily a risk factor in them. But if men that have breasts, like that they have gynecomastia, of course, they, they should, it's a medical condition. They should go to the hospital and get it checked mm. out. So, don't they, they should just even go and remove it now. What do they need it for? <laughs> no, it's true now. <laughs> they should remove it. So, I mean, going back to breast cancer, right? Because we're talking about early detection, right? Because, you see, some of the signs that you mentioned, um, from the little knowledge I understand, is that it's, those are like advanced stages. When you like you start having the, the discharge from your nipple, um, the blood, and all of those things, are they, are, like, are, is that not too late? Is there any kind of like hope for, for someone? When you are at that stage, well, I don't. I don't believe it's too late. Um, it's can, it can be too late. The best kind of cancer is the one that is discovered when you just like if there's breast, it's just a pain and it has not moved yeah. anywhere, right? So, uh, yes. By the time women are seeing those changes in their breast, it, it, it might be a sign that the cancer has advanced. But you can't 
make a clinical diagnosis of that until they actually go to the hospital, the lump is checked, how it has spread, if it has spread is checked, and um, they actually take the, the, uh, lump, um, the cancer out and test it, and then that's when they can make a diagnosis of what stage mm -hmm. the cancer is in, actually. But those things can say that, or maybe it's not, um, it's past stage zero, stage one. Mm -hmm. You can just deal subjectively. So I'll let Jennifer come in. Two things, right? Um, what factor does um, heritage, like um, what's it called, family history? What factor does it play when it comes to um, breast cancer? And from the introduction that I made, it said that 35 um, people now in their 20s, people now in their early 30s, are also you know presenting breast cancer. So when you talked about the earlier um, what's it called, method of detecting it, mammogram and all of that, shouldn't we shift that um, age uh, also? a bit um, to a, a more younger age since younger people are presenting now so two things family heritage and you know why do we have young people presenting okay so family history definitely has a huge role to play in um, breast cancer so if someone has a sister and a mother that has breast cancer the risk that they have breast cancer increases four times wow so if they have two or more relatives that have had breast cancer in the past the risk increases five times and then uh, if someone in the family has ovarian cancer, not even breast now, if like mother or sister um, relative has um, ovarian cancer, it's also a risk for breast cancer, wow. right? So family history, and then there's the issue of the BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene. Mm -hmm. um, these are genes that um, is like, the, of course, we all inherit genes from our parents. So if that um, gene runs in family and then person inherited, it puts them at a risk for breast cancer. And I'm sure the story of Angelina Jolie is overflowed yeah. at this point. And um, the, her mother had the gene. And, and for those that have that gene, um, they present with breast cancer at a much younger age. Mm. So also, someone in the family presenting with cancer at a much younger age is also a huge risk factor that um, the, uh, say if someone's mother presents with cancer, it's maybe like 30, it's also a risk that you, you, the child, might have breast cancer, like a huge risk factor. So genetics definitely has a, has a huge role to play. And yes, I like what you're saying about um, the fact that um, we, are, we are seeing younger people presenting with um, breast, breast cancer, 30, 25. Um, but you know, epidemiologically speaking, they are not in the majority, mm -hmm. and 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 this is just, you know is terminology that they will use to determine. With statistics is what they use to determine at what, what age, yeah. at what age, and what changes should we make. So mm -hmm. they analyze the, the year in review, like twenty twenty two. Um, if you say that these tests they're not free, you get they are still expensive, and they will still consider the pocket of the average um, member of the population. So several factors come into play. So if they say that. The number of people that are presenting with breast cancer less than 40 are still 5%. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that it would reduce the age. But if the number is getting in, in, in increased, mm -hmm. then, then they will. But current statistics still says that women should start um, doing like uh, by yearly, depending on risk. If you're a low risk, nobody in your family has had breast cancer before. If you do it a year, you can do it like by two yearly. Mm. But if they, you are at risk, someone in the family has had breast cancer before, or like there's a solid family history you have to join, then they will recommend annual um, mammogram, right? Uh, so I, I think it all depends on um, also your clinic, your clinician's um, view, because someone that knows your medical your history, history will also be able to make a full uh, decision about your health, other than what statistics is. Awesome. Mm. So you already answered the question I was going to ask because I wanted to ask uh, what the frequency of checks should be. Um, so since you've answered that, my next question would be if, if, if I notice those signs, right, what should be my next steps? Next steps. <laughs> so uh, th there's this thing that I would really much, I uh, very like like to discourage that we do we're very re we're very religious people and of course uh, i personally am a christian and I, I believe so much in power of god but go to the hospital right uh, take medical advice i know it's not easy uh, it's easier said than done 
because by the time you start um, talk to the break, uh, people like sharing experiences from from a fourth neighbor, like, ah, my neighbor had Canadian sick out of breast, and you're telling someone that just covered a lump that they might take out of breast. I mean, it's not good news, right? Uh, so, um, but it's better to be alive and well. So, most people are scared to go to the hospital because of maybe they might have to remove their breast, or they might have to go to chemo or radio, and those things can be expensive and they can be draining emotionally and financially. But regardless of all things, the first step is to go to the hospital. Mm. Whatever lump you're seeing, even if it's a lump, it might not be cancerous, mm. right? It, they would have to do an excisional or incisional biopsy to take it out and then go and test it in the lab. So, um, the best thing to do, you notice any changes in your nipple, your nipple is discharging, the skin around your breast is changing, whatever change it is, as long as it's not normal, go to the hospital, get tested. I mean, that's when you know the next steps mm. to take, right? Okay. Okay, you understand? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so, talking about taking out um, the breast. So, obviously, it means that um, it has gotten to a stage where that needs to happen. There is no, um, there's no remedy right, to save that breast, so it needs to be cut off. So obviously people are definitely going to be worried, or women will be worried about um, functionality, um, still feeling like a woman, and um, probably other things that can function in their body. Just can you shed more light into the positive outcome of the breast being taken out, you right? Be alive. Yeah. <laughs> ah. You will be alive as well. <laughs> I know. I know. That's not the positive. <laughs> but so you you can still function as a woman. Um. So if if, if one breast is taken out, because I've heard I've had these questions, right? If one breast is taken out, you can still can you still breastfeed with the other oh, breast? Uh, yeah. No. Um. How do I put this? Um. Breastfeeding in women with cancer, it, like it's not advisable. I, I would not say it's not advisable. I'm not a how do I put it? I'm not a gynecologist or obstetrician. So yeah. I think the when that we if that happens, the best thing to do will also be discuss with your clinician as regards the best way forward. I don't think breast removal it defines people as um as women as well. Your breast is not me. It's not what definitely makes Make you a sure. woman. And mm. there are options for reconstructive surgery mm. after like uh, silicone-based implants mm. and all of those things. So Which was what and then and and did. did. She took out the tissues and just put implants there. Right. So, so Because it's the tissues that actually develop into cancer. cancer. So mm. yeah, the options are available. They, are just, they might just be expensive. But uh, to be honest, is the the... Uh, if the other option is the cancer spreading, taking out your other organs, you know, it uh, it's not it's not a good quality of life in the mm. long term. So mm. if taking out the breast would save your life in the long term. Yeah. So I was going to say that. So for breast cancer, right? You know, they say that early detection and all of that. How long does it stay stagnant before it, you know it gets to that stage where you know because there can be cancer there, it might just be dormant. I don't know. if if you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So how long does breast cancer, because again, when we're talking, talking to people and we're saying, go get checked, you know, some people really have time. Some people maybe 10 years, some people, you know, and all of that before it then starts to probably react or whatever to the body. How long is that time in your experience, like women, different women, you know? Well, th there's no, how do I put it? There's no, there's no, um, specific timeline time yeah. so some people it's months some people is yes like you see a lump today and in the couple, next couple of months it has if the person doesn't do anything about it so different cancer has different growth rates so the, uh, breast cancer has various subtypes right um, like um, and like you talk about doctor carcinoma um, invasive lobular carcinoma like it has different subtypes and those different subtypes have different specificities to them so it's not something to joke with. It's not that like you see them going to sleep. Mm. Right? So you, you could say it would be years. So people say have years. time. You know, they give it time. There, there's no time. Mm. I think, and that's a message that we have to to uh, eat home on, that there's no time. Um, you could say it could be years, and it's just a couple of months, and everything has gone sideways. Right? So the best thing to do is that you're seeing it, you're, you're dealing with it and you attack it. In I mean, it's not as if you have malaria and say, mm -hmm. <laughs> so if something is going to impair your function, like just it's better to to eat it. Um, I don't, I've had friends, siblings that have had like lumps or things like that. The moment you discover 
go get it checked out. I, the best kind of counselor they would say is a carcinoma institute. In that time, you might not even feel a lump. Maybe they pick it up on, on mammogram. It has not, it has not left. It's just a the cancer is just there. Mm. Now, carcinoma institute can, and then you tell someone that this is what they have. Let's take care of it. And they're like, ah, oh, no, maybe I'll come back. By the time you come back, you'll be like stage three or stage four. Whoa. Like Whoa. nobody can really tell how how bad it's gonna get or how fast. And does your lifestyle okay. affect these things or? Yeah. Because yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to understand <laughs> it because. I mean, some people have lumps, and I've, I've heard stories of how they stayed, you know, nothing happened, and they took it out. You get what I'm saying? So, does your lifestyle affect the, the rate at which the cancer spreads or the cancer grows in your system? I, I can't say, um, no. technically, I can't say for sure if lifestyle would affect cancer growth rate, but the one thing I can say is that lifestyle is a risk factor for mm. development of the cancer itself. Right, um, alcohol intake, smoking, obesity, sedentary lifestyle, healthy diets. I mean, those are the things that would uh, trigger me, that can trigger cancer. But um, for the growth rate, I can't, I can't really answer that. I can't say that this would make it go faster. This would not let it go. Mm. Can. Okay, so sorry, Jennifer. Interesting. So if somebody finds out now, right? You talked about affordability. I want you to touch a bit on, on that. Because I know that a lot of organizations are actually doing free things. And I need you to talk, touch more on what you do. You know, so for people that, you know, you just want to get checked. Because I know I've seen a lot of free campaigns, free this, free that. Right? They, they do that. So when you find that out, you know, what's the best thing? Do you, some people start to say, okay, I need to fly outside of the country. Are there places you can go to in Nigeria here? can help you, you know, that have, have had success stories and all of that. Just maybe walk us through that. Okay, so, um, like I said, the first thing to do is go to a hospital. Any hospital, really, um, uh, but government hospitals are, are where you will find more uh, consultants, more specialists, um, more hands that are more experienced with what you do. Some people would not prefer that because of these hospitals, because the of... wait time because of how good they are too, mm. is where a lot of people go and you know there's also the question of affordability right uh, treatment is not cheap I, I can't put a figure to it but it's it's a long term at least for a bit um uh, for breast cancer is surgery surgery then radiation therapy or hormonal therapy uh chemotherapy depending on what they find in this surgery so um, radiation therapy could go from anywhere like five weeks and above, and that's you have to be doing it consistently to achieve the desired result. So um, for people who can afford it, they can try to fly out, they can try private hospitals, but for the average Nigerian government hospitals really, and for people that can't afford it, of course, like you said, there are NGOs mm. that are working on um, supporting people with um, breast cancer. There are also NGOs, and some of the programs of these NGOs are also um, how do I put it? Um, early detection too. Mm. So, so like uh, because they understand the expense when it gets to that stage where prevention yeah, is always better, better than, than cure. Yeah. So uh, those are um, angels that will also do like uh, as this month is breast cancer awareness month, they will do like free mammograms for women above forty. Wow. Uh, you know those those kind of things, right? So um, I feel like if anyone eats help. Uh, you just go online and search. There are a couple of them that do provide support and all that. So. Yeah, so you, you didn't touch on your organization. Oh, yeah, what my organization does, it's actually a social enterprise. We provide health information for adolescents and young people. My, awesome. my own work is focused more on, uh, yes, information about breast cancer will also be a part of it, right? But um, I, I love preventive medicine, and that's what I'm doing. So our website, you find information on sexual health, mental health, fitness and diet just a way of you know educating young people so uh, they can start making healthier choices now that their future self can thank them for yeah. awesome. As awesome. so my work is immediately preventing that that's beautiful mm -hmm. nice so i have a comment here that says um the advice i would love to give women most especially the market women stop putting money into your breasts mm. because breast is made up of tissue so putting money exposure exposure of breasts to sunlight can kill it and cause free access 
to air diseases and women should be careful of their body when having sex with their partner. Can you explain? <laughs> 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 me, me, that yeah, money inside, inside breast, I don't understand it. Thankfully, I think there was a major campaign that, that went around. Yeah. Because now, you see all those market men, they have their pouches have that, yeah, yeah. that they put the money. Because that money inside breast, for me, was the handling. You don't know who has touched, 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 touch, just come and put it, you know. So for me, I didn't understand that thing. When they were using their bra. At least if you keep money, nobody, nobody will take it. Nobody can take it. You know, so what about the sex part? I don't understand. I, I don't eh, understand. Don't <laughs> I don't, I don't understand it. <laughs> but, but I feel like men have a big role to play. Men that have partners. You actually can actually, because I've heard cases of, it was in the process of, you know, like, romance and foreplay and all of that, that the man felt the breast of the wife and felt ah, something is different, you know. And that means the man was also paying attention. Because me, I believe that, you know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a two-way thing, right? Um, if the woman is not able to notice it, um, the man should be able to say, oh, there's something different about your body. But we're talking about sizes, right? I know that they say that every woman has one bigger breast than the other. Some of us, we don't really have it, like, obvious, right? So the people that have, like, does, does breast size have anything to, to do with, you know, like, pre predisposition to cancer? Because, you know, sometimes when the breast is big, it's, you might just feel, oh, this is the normal thing. Because, like, my breast is quite, you know, sizable, you know? <laughs> so it's something that in, the, in two seconds, I'm done with what it is I want to do. But you know some people are really big, right? Is it possible that some of these lumps are able to hide in those kinds of sizes of breasts or breast uh, size don't have anything to do with it? That size doesn't matter, to be mm -hmm. honest. Like, mm -hmm. uh, if men who really have rudimentary, okay. like, who, who in the country have nothing, <laughs> can have breast cancer, then you realize that size doesn't matter. As long mm. as the logos and, um, like, the, the breast has logos, has docks, it has everything that makes up the breast. Whether it's small or it's large, anyone can have breast cancer. But I do, I do I agree with your school talking about maybe because of how um, massive the, some people's mm. breasts can be. Maybe they, they might not be able might miss it to, to tell. tell, right? But... Still, that's why I, I would say that it's self-breast awareness, not just um, self. If, no matter how massive your breast is, it's still your breast. If you stand in front of a mirror you know. for certain examine every And, you know, the thing is that when, if you're younger, you might not take notes. But if something has happened to you before, you may notice that in front of a mirror and examine. You will, you will check everything and be sure that. So if you feel that there's a place that is becoming other or there's a skin over a place Something that changing. You would be able to Absolutely. tell. Mm. But do you advise that outside of self-examination that maybe she should just go to, because if the breast is big, or more, I've seen breast, mm -hmm. as in, so if it's not better to just go and give the professional hand the, <laughs> hand the breast over to the professional. It's true now to help you to like because they will do the real examination or just go for mammogram because you are, maybe you're not there you're not that age for mammogram yet now. Abi? Yeah, I, I the, the thing is that if you go for mammogram at thirty, it's not as if they will turn you down. But well, it's just yeah. it's just so yeah. If and like it's a it's a matter of concern. Mm. So I was reading um like the recent study on. Um, this self breast exam it says that if a woman is of low risk, there's no family history of breast cancer. Yeah, no the doctor shouldn't even bother doing okay. the exam. All right, thank you so much. We had so much fun discussing <laughs> breasts. Before we go, ensure you follow us across all our social media handles. Listen to our podcast on Spotify at We Show Africa. Now, like, share, invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. This particular show, <coughs> share the link to many women that you know, Biko. And men, too, because we hear that some of men have it. So if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. It says, um, I am a 36-year-old person with breast cancer, and not many people know that. That happens to women my age or women in their 20s. This is my opportunity now to go out and fight as hard as I can for early detection. This was from Christina Applegate. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. So we'll bring another great conversation to your screen. Thank <laughs> you.